This is a 1929 type scenario. I think the best performing assets will be gold, U.S. Treasury long bonds, and eventually Bitcoin in the macro. Hello, everyone. Today, our guest is trader and Bloomberg financial expert Mike McGlone. In this video, Mike McGlone talks about the recession, inflation, economic outlook, macro situation, and the Fed's decisions and rate hikes to conclude what to expect in year 2023 and beyond. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. There is both good and bad news about our country's economic outlook. The good news is that the Federal Reserve seems to be winning its fight against inflation. The bad news is that it appears likely that the cost of victory will be a recession caused by the Fed, engaging in monetary policy overkill coincident with a looming fight over increasing the debt ceiling. The timing is perilous. After allowing inflation to surge to a multi-decade high of 9.1% by means of an overly expansive monetary policy, the Fed has now dramatically reversed course. Last year, the Fed hiked interest rates on four occasions in unusually large steps of 75 basis points, making this the fastest pace of interest rate hikes since the early 1980s. At the same time, it has withdrawn market liquidity at the unprecedented pace of $95 billion per month by choosing not to roll over its maturing treasury bond holdings. As dizzyingly loose as the Fed was in 2021 in response to the COVID emergency, it is now tightening with alarming severity. Um, what thing we have to recognize, and we can show some charts in a second, is what's happened recently was a massive bear market rally for now. It could be a bottom like 2018 and 19. We hope so. But there's a big difference with back then is that is this is in the context of a still a lower tide liquidity is being there's a rug pull in liquidity still on a global basis. And that is not just the Fed tightening. Every central bank and the, the plan is still tightening. And the key thing I'm watching for this week is we have the NASDAQ. It's just teetering on that 200 week moving average. It's broken below it. It's only done that three times in history. I'd like to show you that in a second. And every single time the Fed was easing and it came out of it okay. Fed's tightening. So I look at Bitcoin as, yes, it's a leading indicator. Maybe it's leading on the way back up. It maybe is putting a bottom like 2018 when it dropped below 5,000, then went back up 5, 000, about 5,000 and built a nice little island bottom. Um, but... Like I said, the difference is liquidity is being pulled away still. And if the NASDAQ breaks down, everything breaks down, Bitcoin is going to be part of it. I still think it's going to come out ahead. So to me, that's where we stand in the big picture macro is I still think we're in the midst of the biggest macroeconomic reset of our lifetimes. I can detail why. And the way you can start that with is we just had a 100-year event in terms of pandemic. We're having a historic war in Europe and we're having a historic shift in political leadership in China. I mean, it's going back to the days of Soviet Union, when you have one leader and expecting to be economically viable. And those are kind of the basis, I think, I, where we can really start. We're, we're still pulling liquidity from the market on a global basis, a historical, unprecedented basis, on, for good reasons. And if equities go higher, if risk assets go higher, these liquidity is more likely to remain um, constrained from central banks. So what I'm showing you is a chart, uh, you know, we see this potential island bottom developing around 20,000, the same way it did around 5,000 back in 2018. The big difference is what I show you in white is the Fed, Fed funds futures. Back then, the Fed already started easy and we held the bottom and broke out higher. And then we had that issue 2019. The cool thing is we've had basically an 80% correct. We've but the thing I want to really show is, to me, this is the macro watching this week, week, and this is the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ is at its 200-week moving average, not 200-day. 200, day, 200 days is for day traders. The 200-week <laughs> moving average in the history of the NASDAQ, since it could be calculated, we only broke through that level three times. Um, and every single time, the Fed was easing. The last good example was 2008. The Fed was easing aggressively. Right now, they're tightening aggressively. So you look at that, you can't be too excited about any markets until we have, give it some time. I'd say don't really, big picture, yes, really bullish Bitcoin. But to me, this is an environment that's 
unprecedented where we're having bounces in what we know are bear markets. And the Fed just says, sorry, we're taking the punch bowl away. We're not going to bat you. And so the other thing I want to point out, I think expanding what Dave said is what's happening now is we're going to look back at this like we did with Mt. Gox and like the cleansing of 2006 and eight in the stock market, which makes foundations. Foundations and enduring bull markets almost always come from cleansing. And this is classic cleansing. So look at this example. If we didn't have that tide go out, FTX, the FTX paradigm scheme, which started Almeida, would have just lasted. It's gone. We flushed better it out. Better now. Yeah, better exactly. now. Exactly. You got to yeah. get that out of the way. And it's opportunities for those of us who remain solvent. Dave knows that. And I've been stopped out in a lot of wrong positions in my life. And sometimes, you know, like, I know I got to buy, but darn, I, the management's clapping me on the back of my shoulder because, Mike, you're <laughs> overweight. You're too early. But this is what it is now. The thing is, I we could get down to 12000 in Bitcoin, but I fully expect in Five years, we're going to be talking about, man, we got problems of 100 grand. And all those people, Dave, would talk about all those people who are underweight, they're going to have to follow a bull market. And the best time to buy and to allegate typically is bear markets, where you know you're not leveraged too much or you have strategies that are not going to stop you out. You can just accumulate and forget about it. Look what's happening with GD, GBTC. I'll end with this. That's some of the signals I got last month. Now, I admit I've been early in GBTC. It was a big driver of the bull market, 18, 19, 20. But what's happened to it recently is it hit some major cleansing stops. That 50% discount, which is now about 36%, to me, is going to go down in history as one of the best buying opportunities ever. I could, it could go back to 50%. But what's happening, I think, in there and in BITO, which is the other ETF, which is out, actually outperforming Bitcoin because it's rolling into backwardation, is this is an example of things you you talk about years from now when you say that was a bear market bottom? But come on, like you, it does. It's not easy. And if it's easy, something's wrong. I've learned that lesson. I, Dave kept his hair. I didn't realize yeah. that GBTC was back to thirty six percent when you just said it. I, I looked it up. I thought we were still right around fifty. So I, I don't know where it's, I've been, but that's a heck of a trade. <laughs> it's one of the best performing assets this year, up thirty six percent. 36.6%. Um, and yeah, well, how, how does that happen? It gets hammered. But is it, is, a fundamental, is it a fundamentally bullish market that I think is going to 100? Yes. If I'm wrong, you know who to blame. But I can show you it, it's had some major issues. It has some, but it, it, you know, I don't know all the interworkings of actually how it works. But um, it's just the number one most widely traded ETF and Bitcoin. Not widely traded. Bitcoin is now more widely traded, but held. And it's so in the tape every day that um sure this is a dead cat bounce but just taking away that premium which is going to happen over time is part of the indications of 50 percent discount you're going to say five years from now yeah that was pretty pretty low just like when amazon was trading at five and went up to 2000 and the u.s is just shining in this environment of in ta and tanks invading uh russia and the autocratic leadership in china i think people are underestimating this is the beginning of the u.s crushing it and the u.s is very favorable to bitcoin why because we're one of the few countries that can as we, we don't have to worry it's that whole layer of cryptos adopted the dollar and to me this is where the macro comes into place i'd like to fo focus in the micro but the, so I'm, I'm kind of ranting a little bit but to me the macro is so favorable for the u.s and people like like a lot of other podcasters point out how oh you know Every every great major um, country has its peak control. We've only been around 300 years. I mean, Rome was like a thousand. China peaked in the 1800s. <laughs> like that. Still, we'll say this. This is a 1929 type scenario. In 1930, the stock market rallied 50 percent and then went down. It's just taking away liquidity. But I have to defend the Fed. Remember, they did something in reaction to something that never happened in anybody's lifetimes. And the example was from the the pandemic or for, from the plague from, you know, right around World War uh, One, And obviously they did it too much. Remember, it, we, it's only been two years since we've had vaccines. Look who really messed it up. China did not, their system did not allow them to get over this like we have. Yes, people have passed away, but, you know, it's sad, but we're over the over that. And that's part of it. Why did the Fed pump so much? But it's a classic example of human nature where there's no way out of this that I see it now, except taking it back the fed's doing it and assets risk assets have to go down that's why i still think the best performing assets will be gold 
U.S. Treasury long bonds and eventually Bitcoin in the macro. Now, the micro things attract those like GBTC. <laughs> Dave can figure that better than me. But that's we, to me, this is why this history is being made is it's almost inevitable. We have to get through this reset. And if we are lucky enough to do it, and here's one thing I do enjoy with people calling from bottoms in the stock market. What did you not understand about the history of stock markets typically bottom after the yield curves is well into a steepening mode, well above inversion, and the Fed starts easing well after they start easing. We're nowhere near that. The curve is still inverted and still going inverted. And that to me is the key thing I want to point out is if you can, like David Rosenberg points out, there's one et estimate he wants to watch. It, 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 if he had only one measure, it's the curve and it's still inverted, which means the market's getting started the price for this big reset. The Fed, for its part, should slow down and wait for the full effects of its policies to take effect before squeezing the economy too tightly. As for McCarthy and the Freedom Caucus, the hope that cooler heads might prevail would be more in the nature of a prayer than a prediction. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.